Hello, everyone. I'm in a very um, calm vibe right now. And as I was looking at a candle and the reflection of the candle on the side of the container that it's in, I, I saw a perfect metaphor for how our mind is a reflection of our uh, simpler steps. So little things build up to big things. And so if man finds himself complex, it is his simplicity that is keeping him there. If you're not able to, in a sense, discover the simple qualities of how you are aware and how you are alive, you cannot, in a sense, maintain through many noises that seem... unnecessary you see when you are going out throughout your day you have a sense of movement if you run you have a sense of movement but you can still have that part parts of that sense of movement without even running through simply how your mind applies itself and so you you kind of see that through your eyes memory is becoming relevant and so, when memory comes to the individual, it is always reminding him that the vicinity of awareness can never be individuated. So you can never pinpoint the origin of your awareness, but to know that you are it. Because when you see yourself, your mind begins to create, in a sense, out of its own programming, many layers you're still alive and being alive is a creative process so when you think about questions you're creating the answer simply with your openness to see what's there the nature of the mind is actually very simple uh, the reason it becomes complex is that we get entangled in our own maze which begins with how we thought we are here. If I have a wrong impression of why I am sitting on this couch, a totally wrong story, then I will not comfortably know why I'm here. Because my conscious mind is doubting what I innately know. And when you see that there is a doubt, doubt is a creativity of man. But at the same time, a sense of self-maintenance. So you keep yourself in a sense where you find yourself small. You have to consider yourself as this body before you can have a real experience of something else because the most realist thing for you is this immediate body which you're aware of. And so your most immediate body, whether it is your physical body or body of thought, is actually there to show you that through its separation, in other words, how it is individuated in regards to the collective, how it is shaped, is there to inspire you to feel and remember that you're not shaped. And when I say you're not shaped, it doesn't mean that you do not have a design. It means that your consciousness is aware of the design, but it, it, it is not the design. The light that I shine on something that is on the ground does not belong to the object on the ground. It belongs to the hand that is holding the light, and the hand that is holding the light is holding it in a certain way. So in other words, the way our universe is designed, it has a certain blueprint, which I would like to call, you know. I started using this word when it came to me, and I, I saw that there's a blueprint of design to how I am sitting here and how these words are even capturing things, because they too have a design based on the natural phenomena, which is the evolution of man to have created a language system to be able to name and acknowledge objective versions of human beings in more infinite ways. If you have a sense of natural observance, that means that that simple metaphor does exist in a complex, in a more complex reality because you are the one who can see that complexity. When you create a certain frame, you're limiting how wide the picture is. And so we see that in life, it's simply a movement between frames and we wonder why we're tired of taking photos, you know. We, we, we need to look at what is here. 
What is here is actually that which is experiencing the experience, regardless of what it is. You could be in the worst lands, or you could be in the best lands. You know, you could be in the most comfortable chair or in the roughest ground, you know. But regardless, once you sit down, once you feel that stillness, it has nothing to do with your condition or circumstance, but it has everything to do with how you're aware of your circumstance. And so the way you um, <clears throat> enter the pool suggests, uh, you know, not only how deep it will feel, but also you know, how you're starting the journey. You see, everyone has a sense of longing within them, and that's good, because that longing is simply the wood under fire. And we see that it's as if we are like this candle. We are kept lit. We have inspiration. We have curiosity. We have a sur a, the, the, the feeling of transcending our own survival. And so when we, when we have this, we see the human being has reached such a complexity that it can no longer continue into complexity, it has to come to simplicity. So you have to go to such a simple state after reading every book in the library to see that what you're looking for is not, it has nothing to do with books. So after flipping these many pages, you do not get disappointed. You see, it's irrelevant. A lot of your disappointments and stresses are irrelevant. You don't really deserve to be stressed and you're being stressed while you need to be doing your life's work. What that means is throughout this life, you have certain things you have your attention on and you have certain things which you're interested in. You have naturally been interested in them. How do you know this? Because that's why you know them as your interests. And so because you're interested in them, you have uh, more of an allowance to give yourself to grow from that experience. So if I am sitting here and I don't choose to grow with the circumstance and the condition of my experience, I can do that. There have been beings who have done that. There have been beings who have sat literally in the fire of punishment to have been left untouched in their meditation. So you see the human being can reach such a peak even where he controls his physicality from affecting the circumstance. And when you see when one part of the circumstance tries to affect the circumstance, it either might must f see itself through greater eyes or it must stop looking. And what that means is that not stop looking, not stop searching, but stopping a, a sense of thinker or someone who's looking for something. Do you know? You do not want to carry your complexity into your simply because you simply can't. You cannot carry complex problems when your life is flowing beautifully with simple principles. And simple principles mean it is not something you're trying to shape, but you know it is as present as the gravity of any situation. It's there. It's natural. And so the laws of nature are things which textbooks can explain to you, poetry books and, you know, other creative works can get really close to, but the best thing is your own experience. And you see, after you have, you know, felt the things that you've, you really wanted to feel, you see what is only left is to build from a memory that felt it was satisfied. Your attention is your momentum to being anywhere or anything. So, in other words, you see, they talk about desires. They say you have desires, you have sin. I don't think about sin. Because sin is okay, but it only activates a limited range of emotion. You want to think about things with greater emotions. And what that means is that on your happiest day, if you pick up the pen, you will have many things to say. And in a sense, let yourself be innocent to the moment. It's not something which you need to hold. You, you look and see that what was the difference between your innocence as a child? Simply, you just didn't care that if you were innocent or not. You walked into experiences with the naturalness of how the wind pushes, you know, those who need to be carried you 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 need to look at yourself and understand that you are lit you have a great sense of emanation meaning that you have your whole life to create the greatest of the greatest things that you can do think of your life as not you're here to live a life 
see it as your from the moment you were born you have started your life's work and so every moment is purposeful in ways which your greatest surprise even can't understand because there are greater surprises that await so work with higher energies in life and that means higher uh, archetypes archetypes that are not limiting you to certain uh, memories of your past that are keeping you incapable do not ignore the past allow it to be an inspiration for your future because that's the only reason why it's there it is there to help you build a greater awareness of the next moment you know and regardless of the action that you do I can measure the river but it will never be accurate the greatest experience that you can get of a river is not to ask me what river it is. Do not ask me how the river will feel like when you jump in it. Do not ask me what a river is. Do not ask me if you even need to see what a river is. Do not ask me if it's r the river is right or wrong, but to simply look at my eyes when I am extremely silent and looking at you and to know that the only way is to jump into the reality which we thought or and very wrongly assumed was our end. Do you know how many times I have went to my peak and you know any person who goes to the gym and who works out knows this. When you're going to failure your muscles begin to having voices because you're thinking oh god I don't want to do this you know. <laughs> and so when you go to failure and when you have given all you can and you see that you have an iron will that can give more, that is a type of alchemy where you're not only cultivating mastery from doing the act, you're becoming the act and that is why you're always naturally masterful in it. In other words, Look at how naturally you pick up a spoon and pick up objects. Look at how naturally you handle simple things. When it gets complex, you forget this naturalness because you're always trying to think of what to do. Remember the naturalness of your own abil ability. There was a time where I thought I couldn't draw, I couldn't write, or I couldn't, you know, be creative. I thought I was just like a passive passenger in this life. That's how I felt. But then, when the ideas that give you that feeling change because life is a changing process you see that your life's work finds you you see that suddenly you begin looking at a depth where every experience you've had so far everything that you can remember is sufficient enough to bring your greatest efficiency I know that my mind has recorded things and I know my mind can express that recording regardless if I try or not because I know I know how to brush my teeth I know how to do these simple things which were once complex so we see that we are constantly bring a state of being that naturally and very is internally simple but externally handling everything through that simplicity we see the innocent nature of the child going through for example example the darkest of you know places and still coming out with an illumination that cannot be touched and you know see this within yourself because you too were once a child and that memory is with you as much as it was then the reason why certain things fall out of memory is because you have not brought an intensity in your attention to remember them. When you don't, when you need to move your car before it's being ticketed, you, you will find your keys regardless. You will look in the pocket where they told you not to look and you will find that key and you will see <laughs> that you have driven away from the situation where you thought something negative was going to come to you. The negativity once confronted is as neutral as can be. The electron is at first separate. But in, in, in an atomic understanding, they are, they are not separated. They are kept together by a greater whole. So we see all these separate elements kept by greater elements, let's say. So what that means is that perhaps the, the, the act, imagine what I do, 
imagine what Mr. Within does in this life, in his life's work, you know. And imagine your life work. And imagine all of humanity just naturally aligning and expressing themselves and enjoying their being, you know. Rather than enjoying their being highs and lows. But naturally realizing that every moment is blissful because there's no need for there to not be blissed. And similarly, no need moment is also that agitated because you can look through it, look at it calmly. And that is what happens when you see someone who is more open to life than you. You see that they have an authentic smile, which you're missing. And they, you see that you feel lack, but they, they can't even see lack because they're having too much fun. And you see that fun is not one that requires substances or drugs or psychedelics or even, let's say, meditation. It requires an authenticity to let go. And release yourself instantly to your lightest sense. In other words, if you feel chained, let wings open up and, you know, let those chains fall away. You don't need things that you don't need. And it's these simple phrases that show you how you accepted a thought too early because you didn't look at it deep enough. Learning is to go and break what you think is there to see that with you breaking it, there's something more there. And when I say break, I don't mean break, I mean integrate. <laughs> I mean anything that life deconstructs as it has constructed, observe and allow it to flow in the natural ability for you to think of greatness. Through our ability to simply be. We are at the state of being before requiring even any sort of relationship to help us. At times it is not information that you need, but it is awareness to the information that you have that will unleash and in a sense unlock you. There are people who I will talk to and they will literally not hear my words because they cannot. Because the way they were introduced to, to these words does not suggest the experience I'm saying. And so you will see what can happen is only an allowance for you to not know, to then know something beyond what you could ever know. And so there's a beautiful quote that says, we need to be willing to let go of the life that you know, we think we should have to, in a sense, have the light that is waiting for us. And I really understand that because, you know, and of course there's a more accurate version of this quote, but the principles in the quote, what the quote implies is that the moment is where greatness is perceived. So the moment is where your life's work is going to occur. So you don't need to calculate in a sense all the time even though it's really fun to do to be organized and to be disciplined and to handle something through the sense of novelty within a routine but at the same time you don't need to segment your sense of space and time to know to be accurate and to function the intelligence of a tree works with invisible planning and what that means is that invisible planning doesn't exist <laughs> It's simply not planning, but in a sense, allowing the planning to occur. So your mind has an ability to, right now, bring certain thoughts, certain images to you in which you then can put consciously, based on this immediate moment, into a certain understanding and rationality. But someone who, for example, gets Alzheimer's, who is a brave being who's going through that experience, in a sense, understands that he is trying to understand life more than his memories, more than language. And so, do not be frightened or feel sorry for a being that is authentically suffering. Because that being knows. But be sorry for a being that has lost its authenticity, authenticity in feeling that it lives in an illusion. Because that sense of self is 
as easy to get away uh, or get rid of or in a sense transform as turning the light on or blowing a candle. You see, the Buddha in his, in his search, internal search under the tree, in his internal exploration, he reaches a point where he needs to confront the darkest archetypes, anything that he could perceive as pain enemy or all that could shape into an arrow of cruel suffering. In a sense, these many As the Buddha is sitting under the tree, his mind begins to perceive armies of darkness attacking him and shooting arrows at him. And when these arrows are about to hit him, he changes them into lotus flowers because he has found the stillness that is unaffected by any movement. The silence that is there regardless of the noise. And man will never be able to understand spirituality omniscience and multidimensionality if he ignores the value of experience by finding comfort in language so if you make an excuse rather than going through the experience you will never feel that authenticity you will never feel that moment where life is saying the reason I am throwing a punch at you because I want you to punch back with new arms. I want you to recognize that you are being rebuilt by your own understanding into being something more than the suffering that you're colliding with. And so any collision gives you a greater awareness of any body. And so as the Buddha was there within his internal experience, being the cosmos that can turn the darkest forms into the most beautiful and fragrant imagery, he showed that man's mind in its internal confrontations of his circumstance and condition is always beyond his consideration. In other words, your awareness is beyond your consideration. Because without awareness, there would be nothing to even consider. So awareness brings forth a consideration and all identities which we consider or names we consider come from there. So before you are named, you are an awareness to name. And before you are an awareness to name, you are an awareness that cannot be named. And life aligns. Synchronicity becomes your breath because you see that flow, that rhythm, that trust, that confidence that your heart has to continue its beat is emanating through you. It's radiating through you as well. <laughs> so you get the comfort of being able to reach the peak of being serious into accessing all archetypes within your knowing, within your remembrance, and in a sense being the most serious person, but at the same time having an ability to let that go and immediately be the simplicity of the child that doesn't even know what he's doing. You have in your memory an ability to have multiple senses of experience, regardless of how consciously segmented you can acknowledge, being present within the moment. You can call it a subconscious, but if you look at who is categorizing, it is only there based on the image of the category. And that image is being observed by a sense of knowing that knows itself. So it's very important to after hearing or after going up an energetic high. So let's say suddenly you go through some synchronistic alignment, you go into a great moment, you, you, just, you just have a moment which the moment is so blissful that objective reality and subjective reality fade into just absolute being. Let's say you go through that. Afterwards, you see it's like you have read a book which you can't act as if you haven't read. You know some things about how the nature of reality works that you cannot ignore, but in a sense, you're now required to again work for a greater sense of alignment. So once you do a virtuous act, you are introduced to a body that has a, 
ability to more greatly understand its eternal quality. So, what is an eternal quality is the ability to see the spectrum, to see the temporal constantly being changed in various points of awareness, which are in a sense infused to be omnipresent. Concentric circles have the omnipresence of the last circle. So our expansion of the universe could be the peak edge of our imagination. So our imagination is not far from any experience in this space and time continuum. Because the conceiver of the space and time will become so, in a sense, suddenly you're, you will see it's like the involvement changes as a conscious being. It's like I have an involvement right now of holding this... Um, phone while talking to you but suddenly you see there's an involvement in the subtlety of your thought that is shifting you to a wondrous state where you have enough allowance to experience a greater sense of your own ability through the expression that we call living a good life authenticity sincerity nature peace a peace that acknowledges both sides. Serenity. These are the great cloths which we don't even shape, but we put on ourselves and put on our shape. We recognize that just like how Gandhi wore those simple garments, we keep simple ideas. We don't let ideas get complex because we know that if they get complex, we will have to experience the complexity of that dysfunction. To experience the complexity of the simple thing means that before it gets too complex, you're always simplifying it. And in a sense, your mind is not entangled. You go throughout your day, and in a sense, you actually see that the process of entanglement is a stop on, on constantly trying to stop the entanglement. Action dissolves the self-talk in your mind that is not helping you. And that action is best done, is best experienced through an authentic existential allowance in other words, you're in the environment, you're not worried, you're not trying to control things all the time, but you allow any technology you know within your system of being to come to your mind to bring the most efficient outcome. So simply, you actually work with feeling. So in other words, if I want something, I don't attain it at first through imagery. In a sense, instantaneously as an experiencer of this cosmos I have an ability to receive some form of feeling it's as if my feeling has already ran to the end of the finish line and so I feel I'm there now I see I need to do the work but my ambition my inspiration there so this is where you have two choices either to sit down and plan and go through many more cycles of solidity to see that it's not a solid it's not a solid walk you in a sense see that you need to trust the temperature in which life is putting you in and in a sense allow yourself to naturally flow where you need to so once you your particles you have been shaken in other words you've heard a, a lecture that has inspired you whether it's from my voice or any other man's you then simply sit down and in pure gentleness stillness and silence consciously journey into what you must do and so you see that feeling begins to get the feeling of the journey so shape becomes fascinating for you life becomes blissful because you actually begin paying becoming aware and a sense self-aware to the design of how your life is becoming your next ambition so that person who has built an empire knows that there was a moment he received, there's a moment in his achievement that he was omniscient because his achievement belonged to the greatest ability of mankind. And so, bless all those beings who, regardless of their voice, regardless of how they market themselves or show themselves, are just pushing man's ability to the next level and they understand the value of their presence regardless of any space or time frame
much blessings. And as your journey calls to you, you have always called to it. Namaste.